Hip, hip, tally ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. And today we are in Hackney, and uh, we're going to walk from Hackney Central all the way down around and uh, sort of end up down near Cambridge Heath. You'll see. Anyway, look, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the videos, because that really helps. And also hit the little bell, uh, because that will notify you when I upload a new one. Now, um, look, we're standing outside the Hackney Empire, which is a beautiful theatre built in 1901. <laughs> It was designed by Frank Matcham, who was your go-to man if you wanted a theatre. He designed the Colosseum. He also designed the Hippodrome in Leicester Square. I mean, mostly in those days, it was people like Mari Lloyd. You know, my old man said, follow the band. Sort of musical stuff. W.C. Fields has performed in there. Stan Laurel. What's interesting, like, from the 1960s till about the 1980s, you see up on the roof there, you see they've got... Um, She's called Talia or Thalia. She's the Greek muse who overlooks poetry and comedy. But in the 1960s, this was overtaken by, I think it was Mecca, and it was, it was a, the bingo, bingo hall. They're always being overtaken by bingo people. And they ended up renovating these domes and the statue of the Greek muse up there. But then they did it all cheaply, but failed to realise that it's a listed building and that they were then forced by the council to come back and redo it using all the proper correct materials and methods. And it cost them an absolute fortune. So in the end, they ended up having to sell the place and now it's gone back to being a theatre, which is what it should be, Simon, don't yes. you think? Yes. And it's also where my sister saw Chaz and Dave play and Chaz Hodges gave her a kiss. In fact, the music you can hear is by Chaz Hodges' daughter. Lately, I just spent a week with me old aunt to see the wondrous sights of famous London town. Just anyway, a week I had a very nice. Look, next to the Hackney Empire is the old, uh, well, the, the, new, the newer town hall. So we'll come to where the old town hall used to be later. This is another one of these town halls you get from the 1930s. On the roof there, you've got your St George's flag for England, you've got the Union flag, Britain, and the one on the right, that's uh, the Hackney coat of arms. I don't know if you can see, actually but I'll refer to that flag later, so note that that's what it is. Um, you've got a museum over there in the library. Now, that's a new library, but the old library from 1907 was this one here, which they turned into a cinema. Why do they have to change everything? Drop me hat box in the mud, the things all fell apart. I like those old uh, original Truman signs, you know, yeah, from the brewery. Yeah. I like that. You get points for spotting those original brewery signs on pubs. And look, you see this road here, Graham Road, number 55 down there. We're not going to walk all the way up there because it's quite a long way. But that's where Mari Lloyd used to live. Now, I'm always oh, going right. on about Mari Lloyd. I don't know if you know who she was, but she was, a, she was the queen of the music halls. My old man said follow the van. Everyone loved her, but a proper East Ender. Um, and uh, famously, she sits among the cabbages and peas. <laughs> that was her. She had all these sort of bawdy, rude, double entendre songs. But she died quite young, but when she had her funeral, hundreds and thousands of people showed up. So it would have been quite an easy short trip for her to walk around the corner and then up to perform at the, yeah. the Hackney Empire. I'd have loved to go and see those in those days because there's no TV and radio and stuff, so that was kind of... Something very special. Yeah. Said goodbye, right away the guard did cry, but I found the train was wrong and Look, this place here, this used to be the station, Oslo, it's now a cafe, but uh, in, uh, it dates from about 1870. That. Then they had to expand it and everything, so it's now the Hackney Central Station's around the corner. But it's nice, that. I like those original stations. And then around here, this is where the buses all, they, now the buses still pull in here. Since the 1880s, when they had these horse-drawn trams, they used to come in here. In 1896, it was the North Metropolitan Tram Company. They converted to electric trams. 1896. And then in the 1930s they became trolley buses. And then in the 1950s they got diesel buses. Now it's, I guess it's back to being. So it's come around in full circle. We're, we're back to electric. Uh, yeah. They got it right the first time. And then, uh... <laughs> Look at this wonderful tower here, Simon. You know, this is the one that appears on the coat of arms, which I was trying to point out to you on the flag, which was fluttering above the town hall over there. Um, it was actually built in the 13th century. Well, not this one. I mean, originally the, there was a church here which was built in the 13th century by, I think it was the Knights Templar, might have been the other Knights. But anyway, it was rebuilt in the 16th century. There's a St. Augustine's 
Sometime later, around 1798, they decided they needed more room because the congregation was growing so much here. So they had to build a bigger church, St. John Hackney, which around there, which we'll come to. Um, but the new church didn't have strong enough bell tower. So they decided to keep this one. And it wasn't until about the 1850s or so that they managed to strengthen the new tower to accommodate bells. Just in front of it, actually, you see this. This is the old vestry hall. The ancient village of Hackney sort of started around here. And back in those days, they had the parish system for, I don't know, administration and stuff like that. It wasn't until 1900 that they brought in the, the metropolitan borough system where they introduced 28 metropolitan borough of Hampstead, borough of Camberwell, all those things. But this was the old vestry hall from 1802. The reason why it says 1900 on it is because that's the year in which it all changed and they introduced these new metropolitan boroughs and everything so they gave it a good sort of sprucing up and so I think it's been renovated. A lot of the local boroughs they wanted snazzy big civic buildings like the ones, well like the one we saw over there. I think they originally intended to, to use it for that purpose that's why I spruced it all up. Anyway now it's one of those kind of uh, pub tap rooms <laughs> you can go in it's closed at the moment because it's quite early in the morning. Oh Mr Porter what shall This was obviously a very well-to-do place to be buried. I mean, they've got all these big family tombs and family vaults, and I haven't ever seen so many of these chest-style tombs in a row. There's, there's a lot of them, and some famous people here as well. Look, Rear Admiral Sir Francis Beaufort. There he is. I mean, he's actually in there, Simon. He's there. So today is an extremely windy day, funnily enough. So on the Beaufort wind scale that he came up with, I mean, what do you think is? Um, it's not calm, zero, uh, gentle breeze, moderate breeze. I mean, moderate at the moment... Moderate breeze today, isn't it? Yeah, moderate breeze, but later on, I mean, yesterday was definitely a strong gale. The tombstones you can see stacked up over there around the, the edges, I expect those are from the old church because they've cleared out all this area. This was the graveyard. So they take all the gravestones and they put them at the side. They just stack them all up. One of whom is Henry Percy, the Earl of Northumberland. He was the guy who was betrothed to uh, Anne Boleyn before Henry VIII came along. He went, step, step aside. <laughs> step aside, Percy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a... Should have done better just to stick with old Henry Percy. Um, so he's there, he, they cleared it out. So all he's got now is a plaque inside the new church. Um, he also arrested Cardinal Wolsey. Did well just to stay alive in those days, if you ask me. Here we go. Look, so this must be one of the stones that denotes the site of the old church. This stone, something, the site, something, something east. I think this... I think the other this, one's over there. Yeah. Oh, there. So, so this is where the, where the old church mm -hmm. came to. They demolished it in 1790. We're going this way anyway. This is a sort of pedestrianised bit of Mare Street. You know, you look up and you notice through these things. So you can see how that used to be a manor house. You see here, this dates from oh, yeah. 1845, Daniel Tyson. He was like a manorial steward, whatever that is. Basically, they, there was a nice old pub on this location called the New Mermaid, and they knocked it down so that he could have a manor house <laughs> here, which if you stand back, you can actually see what it kind of originally looked like. Yeah, it would have been quite grand, I suppose. Mm. I wonder if they would have had something on this side as well. I doubt it. I reckon that probably would have stood alone, wouldn't it, back then? And then they decided, in their wisdom, to turn it into a Greg's and oh, shoe zone. <laughs> what shall I do? I want to go to Birmingham, but they're taking me off to crew. Send me back to London quickly as you can. Oh, Mr. Porter, what a silly. They do concerts and stuff in there. And Hackney's so trendy these days. <laughs> the Coldplay have played in there. And Robbie Williams. I wonder if he played Angels. That probably would have gone down well. <laughs> and through it all. of London. Merchant. See, Hackney was quite uh, popular with merchants. Bankers. It was, it was the new kind of commuter town, I suppose, around this sort of time, like early 19th century, they'd 
and they built up this area for people because it was quite easy to get into into the city from here. Yeah. So this was actually quite a well-to-do It's on the main track, area. isn't it, the, the, the Mayor Road? What else do you see? Look, Deputy, come here, the General of the East India Company, this guy. Look at that. So you get some real, I mean, that was a, that was a decent job in those days. Died 1831. Must have lived around here, I reckon. Would that fit a Yale? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> key, security key. Ske oh. No, probably need a skeleton key for that one. <laughs> yeah. Do you get it? No. Hackney has more than its fair share of these phone boxes. Look, this is, these are the original K2 ones, the nice ones. And they only had about 1,500 of these made. And then they became too expensive. And so they started making the other ones, which have a little window there, like they're smaller, slightly smaller. The K3, I think. Anyway, they're right next to this lovely old police station. Where's the police stations? They're closing them down. Where do all the police go? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I think they just wanted to make some money. <laughs> I think it was sold off. I think it was the government decided to sell it off, from what I can gather. I might be wrong. Don't write in. It's a school of some sort, but uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. Why can't they just leave them as police stations? I suppose that would have had the police light on it, that one, yeah, there, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. It's gone now. Oh. And this is a lovely little street, this, by the way. It's really wonderful. You've got the, the Hackney Public Baths over there. That's from 1897. Got some, quite a lot of the original the old buildings have survived the Luftwaffe here. But across the road there is one of my favourite shops. Look at that, Umit & Son. They sell all the old film equipment, film projectors, Super 8, whatever you call it. You probably know more about it than I do. Let's go over there. 16 milk. I just love the look of 16. Oh, okay. 16 has got a, such a beautiful look. I just love it to bits. But you know, this is this is my favourite. This one oh. here. This is the this is the jewel in the crown. Hey, look at that, huh? Yes, uh, it's a it's a Gaumont. It's it's at least hundred years old. So it would have been nitrate in those days. So you'd load your film, thousand feet maximum which gives you about eight minutes, nine minutes running time. Well, that would have been an epic in those days. So you shut it like that in case it catches fire, so it stays in there. Um, the shutter is on the outside. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, don't get your fingers in there. It's fully functioning. Oh, that sound. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what, 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 what are you gonna have today that's gonna last 100 months, let alone 100 years, you know? And look here to the cinema so you can book this place out. I'm gonna just... Oh, it is lovely, isn't Look it? Look at that, you see, and you can get like, I yeah, don't know, 16 lovely. or so people in here. Let me, let me try this, that, that is come. How about that? It's for private bookings. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So this is the projector you use? That's one of them, that's the Super 16. That's brilliant. Yeah, but we can run any film in here. Can people bring in their own? People bring their own films. For a little special screening, or they can choose one of our films. These seats are original. These yeah. are actually 90 years old. These are uh, from the 1930s. These are actually 100 years old. Sorry. My very good friend Liam rescued them recently. They came from Kinema in Blackburn. Ah. Oh, These are so comfortable. Yeah. You know? From Russia with Love. He's an extra. Is it your dad? Yeah, just an extra in the opening scene. Like, is it really? Is it yeah, yeah. That? That Beginning of From Russia with Love, my yeah. daddy's wearing, he's wearing that. If you watch, look really carefully, you can see him in that chess scene at the beginning, it. they're playing chess. Props. And he's also, yeah, it's nice, that, yeah. What a wonderful film. <laughs> and he's also, in, he's also in the Avengers quite a lot. The actual display rack for the VHS tapes yeah. is something I didn't realise I'd missed or even remembered until I'd just seen one now. It's like, oh yeah, I remember those, isn't it? I sold a copy of Back to the Future. One got auctioned in LA, $75,000. Yes, yes. $75,000 for even a VHS. Them. They grade them, they put them in a, a, a right. prospect's box and say, this is a, yeah, you they know, grade them. represents them. them. They right. the the time. Nerds. Nerds. Authenticates them. Yeah. No, sure I, knew, I knew as soon as I brought Simon in here, they'd have a nerdy conversation. All right. <laughs> the porter wouldn't stop the train, but I laughed and said, you must. Keep your air on Mary Ann and mind that you, you see don't this bust. square, Clapton Square, is laid out in 1816. Look at some of these beautiful houses around here. I mean, I was saying earlier about how all these typical people who'd be living here were like senior merchants, officers, financial brokers. When I was a kid, the word Clapton used to fill me with dread because there was an area 
along there that they used to call the Murder Mile. Oh, okay. Do you know? <laughs> and I always thought, oh, Clapton, mm. Lumenek, that's a bit scary. But, I mean, it's glorious, really. Look at it. It's Tremendous lovely, place. It? Quite a lot of famous people have come from Hackney, actually. Idris Elba is from Hackney. Uh, Alan Sugar. Let me just get over here. Um, who else? We've got Ray Winston from Hackney and I'll tell you who else lived here famously, Joseph Priestley. Joseph Priestley, look, he lived above Domino's. <laughs> anyway, he was the one who invented carbonated water. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. He said, on the whole, I spent my life more happily at Hackney than I had ever done before. That's because he's living above Domino's. Well, yeah, exactly. No problem. Or because they actually welcomed him here because he was up living up in Birmingham. Of course, he supported the French Revolution. <laughs> An mo angry mob hounded him out. And then he was invited to be a minister at the old gravel pit chapel, which we'll come to later. It was popular with Hackney dissenters. And I like it, right? I mean, look at that. Look up there. So it points for that. Look, 1880 Clapton Pavement. That nice little parade there. Well, and it's right opposite this beautiful round chapel, which from 1869 was the United Reformed Church. It says, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And then the cornerstone there is in a round church. <laughs> 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 I don't know, that, maybe that's not referring to the stone, it's referring to Jesus Christ. But, but I just find it funny having a, a corner stone in a round church. But it's now, in, in, since the 90s, it's a place for performing arts. They have lots of big performances here. I wonder what that is. Mm, no idea. There might be something to tie your horse to or something, I don't know. Yeah. Answers on a postcard to... <laughs> I like this shop. This is excellent. Is this your shop? No. Uh, good stuff in there. You always find good stuff in these places. That famous poster that everyone had on their, on their wall. 39 quid for that. So we're now here on the other end of that little cut through. That was down there is where we went to the, uh, the film shop, just down there. So we've walked all the way around. And this strand building, this uh, dates from 1925. It used to be the old uh, Hackney electricity demonstration halls and offices. I love those uh, Art Deco things, but these days it's just flats since the 90s, actually. I don't know if it's luxury flats, who knows? But I do like the details, and it's down there as well. Some old gentleman inside declared that it was hard. Said, look out of the window, miss, and try and call the guard. Didn't I do with all me might? I nearly This is out. a beautifully preserved street. It says Sutton Place, it's called. And these buildings, this on this side, these are from 1795 or so. And you see here, so, you know, under the pavement here, they've got their coal hole covers here. So their coal, the coal man would de deliver their coal down into there. And then there'd be servants living in the basement there could come out, uh, collect the coal and take it up to the rest of the house and put it in the fireplaces and stuff. Filmed the hours, the hours. Was that with Nicole Kidman? I think so. That was filmed down here. And uh, actually, I think Colin Firth lived in this street. They're terrific houses. Um, I mean, named after... Sir Thomas Sutton. Sir Thomas Sutton, he was the one, I don't know if you saw my uh, Charter House video, but he's the one who founded the Charter House, the school and the charity for poor boys back in Tudor times. He used to live in this area, but I don't know, then they flattened his house and they built these houses along here. But around the corner, I mean, he got his, ha he got his land here after the dissolution of the monasteries. So Henry VIII came along, smashed down all the monasteries and nicked everybody's land. And that's how Sir Thomas Sutton who was an arms dealer and the richest man in England, <laughs> managed to end up with that stuff there. But look, over here is Sutton House, which is the oldest in Hackney. Come over here, look, it was built in 1535, this house, for a guy called Ralph Sadlier. Sadlier. Anyway, he was a courtier who worked for Thomas Cromwell. And he's had lots of uses in the past. It's, uh, it's been a school, it's uh, belonged to merchants. All sorts of people down the ages. But in the 1980s, it had squatters in here. It's amazing to think a house like that was squatted. But anyway, they beautifully preserved it. It's closed at the moment, so I'll have to 
go through the keyhole another time with Julesy. Oh, so must be the kitchen, servants' quarters, uh, meals are all prepared. And this, this must be that thing that they use. It's like a, a bed warmer. They warm up the hot coals in there and then they put them into your bed. Upstairs. Now upstairs to the family's quarters. Upstairs. Someone's having something nice for dinner there. Feels like they've only just left. Goodness me. Well, they've done a fabulous job, I must say. It really, uh, really feels very Tudor in here. Do you ever watch Homes Under the Hammer? Stairs going up to the bedrooms? Yeah, Dion <laughs> Dublin. There's a stairs going up to the bedrooms. <laughs> it's amazing. This is like, wow. Is this from when, they, when it was a squat, they've decided to uh, recreate the time, the period when this place was a squat. Can't really blame them. We came down this road, that Sutton, that Sutton house here, Sutton Place hasn't been built yet. So we've got Sutton Place over there with all the nice houses and we've got over here is where the carriages and stuff would have waited. Like for, for the big, you know, wealthy families there and they'd have their carriages and horses out in the back here. And along at the back of the gardens over there, they had the night soil path. It's like the night soil path was where the night soil man, who had the most disgusting job in the world, would have to come along and remove all your effluents and all your poos and stuff from your cesspit out the back because they didn't have flushing toilets or whatever. So he'd come along there and there's the river, the Hackney Brook, coming down the back of, uh, of Sutton House there. Actually the river, the Hackney Brook, ran along the back there and then down further over but that didn't get turned into the sewer until later on so they still at this stage they didn't have a sewer um, and so they had to send the night soil man to come and get your poos um, I don't know what his wife said when he got home <laughs> I mean imagine if that was your job and people do it all the time now with their dogs don't they I suppose I not bother them what, what's the difference with humans Simon Difference. There's a lot of difference. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of difference. Me old friend grasped me leg and pulled me back again. Nearly fainting with the fright, I sank into his arms aside. This is the Burberry outlet store, so if you want some discounted Burberry clothing, you come here. Thomas Burberry was from Basingstoke. He started up the Burberry company. I think he was really young at the time. I think he was like 21 or something. Later on, they invented this waterproof material called garbadine or something, which was, which was used for the uh, trench coats in the First World War. And even Shackleton wore Burberries on several of his expeditions to the South Pole. I mean, even the Queen and King Charles, they have royal warrants from Burberry. But I cried in vain. Oh, Mr. Porter, what shall Look at that, there's quite a lot of housing estates around here. And right in the middle of them, a stink pipe points to me, yes. It's, uh, I mean, I've noticed you get a lot of these along the roots of underground rivers. The Hackney Brook, which was the one that went along behind the, the houses in Sutton Place. It sort of, it now runs in a tube or something, it's been turned into a sewer. And I've noticed you get a lot of those nearby to take all the smelly woofy smells out there and out up into the air. Anyway, points for that. Look up there, you see that church? You see at the top, there's a cock yes. on top of the yes. church. Yeah, that's what he means in King Lear when he's saying, drench the steeples, drown the cocks. Ooh. Blow winds and crack your cheeks, rage blow ye cataracts and hurricanes. He's talking about drench the steeples, drown the cocks. He's saying, drown out those weather vanes, which all tend to look like cocks in those, in those days, because cockerels, sorry, I don't, I'm not trying to be rude, because it represents St. Peter denying Jesus three times three before times. the cock crowed oh. twice. That's why you, you have those cocks quite often on top of churches, in case you were wondering, that's all. Send me back to London quickly as you can. Look, if you look over here, you can just about see, I mean, it's all just gr overgrown now. But there's a few little graves and stuff. This was the old New Gravel Pit Chapel, which stood on this site from 1810 to 1970. 
So that's its graveyard, so some of the graves are still there, and that's the one where Joseph Priestley, he was invited to be a minister here at the chapel. Anyway, that is all that remains around the colossal wreck. The lone and desert sands stretch far away. This is what it's all about, Simon. 1930s architecture. You see, this is how they used to do things well in those days. Oh, that beautiful building from 1937, Lennox House, was designed by J.E.M. McGregor. He went on to become the uh, Professor of Architecture at Cambridge University, actually. I think the idea was to have a marketplace underneath so they could sell stuff and, I don't know, finance the buildings or something. But anyway, it's quite an unusual design. What do you think? I've always liked that effect. It's an in and out. The ribbons, it's like a ribbon. Oh, well, they each have a nice balcony. And they're nicely done. Got a lot of charity shops, some second-hand furniture shops, and other really nice, swanky, new-looking places as well. It's a, it's a bit of an incongruity, this, this street. It is eclectic. My favourite thing about this street is this stamp dispenser. Look at that. You don't get points for spotting this. This is on the, the George VI post box which could do with a lick of paint. What? Oh, look, good action shot there for us. Thanks. <laughs> and look at this, see? Yeah, do you remember those? Right. I haven't seen one for ages. No. Out, out of use. Oh. And yeah, so you put, your, you put your, your coin in there, 50 pence coins only, and then you pull that, you know, and your stamps would pop out of there. Yeah. yeah, and every child who was worth their salt would definitely put their finger in there and check to see if there's anyone left some money, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always used to do that. It's lovely, you don't see those anymore. Well, I used to live in one of these houses. I can't remember exactly which one, but it was... I would have been here nice. back in 2002. Was it as nice as that back then? It was still nice back then. Between you and your brother, you must have lived everywhere in London, Simon, because you were just around the corner from probably the most beautiful terrace of houses. In, in Hackney, or one of them, Castle Road here, look at this. This is from 1792, this was built. Well, I'm very glad I did live here because it was so, you know, it was typical London digs. Yeah. Very romantic, you know, that townhouse, you know, stuff you'd see on TV and film through the years, and then, you know, as a young person sharing a house, so that, that's, that's great. See, those coats of arms up there at the top of the building, those are the three different developers who built that terrace in 1792. Nice that they're remembered up there. On his clean old shirt front that I laid me trembling it. Take it easy, rest a while, the dear old chap he said. See, this isn't like the one that we just saw. This is this this isn't a stamp dispenser. This is a I think this is a box for, for the postman to leave his letters in when he's doing a round or something. Still get points for spotting these and uh, again it's another King George VI post box that's in need of a lick of paint. And it's right next door to the Munger House. In the year 1670, Henry Munger left money in his will for houses for poor men over 60. It just gives you some idea. I don't think it's that long until so we'll qualify for something like this. So if you're over 60 years of age, back in 1670, you could have stayed in one of these, although they actually did refurbish them in the Victorian times. But I mean, some of the brickwork is still original, but they, but yeah, it's had a refurbishment. Essentially, it's been housing poor people for nearly 400 years. And on me do not frown. You shall have my mansion dear away in London town. Ooh, Church of St. John of Jerusalem. This spire up here, originally this is from 1845, this church, but this, this, this was used by the Luftwaffe when they, when they flew across Hackney Marshes on their bombing raids. They would use this as a kind of marker to find their way. And then, stupidly, they bombed it, <laughs> and so they couldn't use it as a marker anymore. Yeah, they had to lower that new steeple in using a helicopter. So they got a helicopter and put that's how they that's how they put the new one on. Is this a flying buttress? I think that's yeah, a flying buttress. Yeah, it is. Yes. Really seemed a nice old boy, so I replied this way: I will be your own for life. You may do the long day. We've come back. We've swung back round to Mare Street. So straight up this road is back where we began at Hackney Empire but wanted to come here to Victor Wynne's Museum of Curiosities, where quite some years ago, vintage jewels paid a visit. 
Now, if you're in Hackney and you want a genuinely eccentric English experience, come and check out Victor Wynne's Museum of Curiosity at number 11, Mayor Street. Had you loved me, if a shining ray of love should warm the darkness of my life, the first throb of my grief-stricken soul would be a happy rhapsody. My name is Victor Wynne, and the hope is to get the whole world into a little box. These are the preserved front bottoms of Victorian prostitutes collected by a Glaswegian surgeon. Cute grief. A well-used vagina. I, Victor Wynne, do most solemnly swear that I witnessed Amy Winehouse pooing into this jar on the 25th of November. No way. Seriously, that is hers. You come downstairs, you pass the mermaid oh, at the bottom hi. of the... How are you? I'm well. We haven't started yet. Have a grass offer. I loved the fairies, because you're always finding a fairy in a pool doing something naughty. There's an artist called Tessa Farmer who makes these little fairies. So here, for example, the fairies are releasing a vial of clothes moths. Napoleon's death mask. Then we move to Sebastian Horsley. Those are the nails that he used when he crucified himself. There's so many weird and wonderful things but that you've actually never seen before. But there's something for everyone. You're actually quite speechless. A shrunken head from the Amazon. Magical soap from the thieves market in Mexico City. I honestly think it's this is a, the weirdest place I've ever been. Have a silkworm. Okay, marvellous. In for a penny. The largest egg in the world that was laid by the extinct elephant bird in Madagascar. Next door we've got the sarcophagus with the human skeleton. You can rent that for dinner parties and you can also rent it for intimate moments. If you're having an intimate moment, we ask you not to put too much pressure on the table. <laughs> and certainly these Chinese dildos, you can hire them by the hour. Oh my good lord. It's only open from Wednesday till Sunday, but you've really got to see it to believe it. He's totally bonkers. He belongs in some sort of gothic novel or something. Indeed, the guileful hesitations would no longer dare to show their crafty face. You would be found amid divine visions, rose blossoms would have adorned the bramble of life had you loved me. I'm wondering why I recognise the name Jay Hoyle and Son, and I'm wondering if they are the... Because it says foundry there, established 1880, so it's quite possible they might have done some of the coal hole covers. If you see a Jay Hoyle and Son coal hole cover, let me know, because that would be really cool. <laughs> I'd like to... I love the fact that... They, look at these old buildings with all the cranes and everything. It evokes the era, doesn't it, Simon? So much for our sunny day. Come here, we're in Broadway Market here. All very well to do these days. Very posh. This is Cat and Mutton Bridge. Cats in the old days, the cat was uh, a reference to the uh, coal barges that used to go up the canal, because this is the canal that goes all the way from the, the docks in the east round to Paddington and the Grand Union Canal. So it's called Cat and Mutton Bridge because it's referring to the cats, which are those coal barges that went up and down, and mutton, as in the sheep, which used to come down, you know, uh, just, we just passed it, actually, Sheep Lane, which is just parallel to Broadway Market. And they'd come down here, I suppose, on their way to, uh, to Smithfield. Points for a spotting a Stone Street sign there. That's quite nice. This was a real working-class kind of market back since 1883. They say this is one of the markets they based EastEnders on. I don't know, it's one of them anyway. Um, it's all rather changed these days. It's all full of very good-looking, well-dressed people. I suppose they think they're having fun. <laughs> Look, uh, this place... <laughs> so this was actually a pioneer shop until quite recently. Still says hot jelly deals. When you look up close, it's actually turned into a optician. So it look, might look a bit strange going to the uh, to the optician to to get uh, jelly deals. But you know, old Fred Cook, he started that up. Well, it says up there, 1862. But oh yeah, you know, he started. He moved here in 1900, and uh, he was selling all these uh, eels and stuff to the to the cattle drovers who would bring the sheep down bloke's grandson was still working here around 2010. I think it's time to go to the pub. <laughs> oh, Mr Porter, what shall I do? I want to go to Birmingham, but they're taking me up to crew. Send me back to London quickly. Good. Cheers, Simon. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the videos. And if you want to find out more about me, you can go over to my website, julesguides.com where you can see lots more videos and even purchase some tasteful merchandise and my book. Anyway, see you next time. Oh, Mr. Butter, what to say?